What is going on guys? Today as a recording it's really really close to the MCS exam. So we're going to go over my five top tips for best preparation for the exam. So coming in at number five right off the bat is understanding the question before you jump in. Now it's really really tempting when we're really anxious and nervous is to see the question immediately diving so I know this I know that I know that all about what they've said but have you really really nailed what they're asking because you can know absolutely everything about the syllabus and ultimately you would fail if you do not directly answer the question and set out your answer in a way that does so so jumping right in with all that nervous energy is a bad idea so make sure you fully understand where the question's going and what you need to write for it. Question number, tip number four rather, is learning your IAS and IFRSs. They changed in January, a number of them switched over to a new IFRS from an existing IAS. So keep that in mind if you did F2 a while ago. The key thing here is that F2 is pretty difficult for the examiner to test at the MCS level. There's no calculations, so the only real thing that they can test you on mostly is the IAS and IFRS regulations for different parts of our financial statement preparation. For example, group accounts could be a big topic here, so making sure that you have all the IFRS knowledge for preparing a group account is super, super important. But with that said, let's move on to number three here, and we've got be very, very comfortable with E2. Now, that doesn't mean ignore F2 and P2, far from it, but E2 is your bread and butter. It is everything to do with the case study. It's very theory-based. It's gonna require you to know F2 and P2 in terms of some specific parts, but your E2 application is gonna be really, really common. And even when there's not a model to apply, E2 will still give you a very good sense of where to take the question because a lot of it is based on the theories that E2 has. So really make sure you know E2. Tip number two, super, super boring for me to say this, but practice. Make sure you practice because practice is the only way that you can get better at judging what the examiner is asking and how to structure your answers. And with that said, we get to number one, which is the biggest and most important tip, when you sit down in the exam, plan your answers. If you do not plan, you're gonna write something that's quite unfocused and not well thought through, and that will lose you more marks than the time you save from not making a plan, I can assure you. We recommend that you do 13 to 15 paragraphs per question, uh, per requirement rather, and making sure that we do four to six lines per paragraph. So quite short, very brief, to the point, no waffling, and a bunch of those for your requirement. And with that done, you should have quite a focused approach. Now, in a separate video, I will be going over my personal uh, approach to the MCS, what we recommend here at Stranti. But that will be in the next video. I hope you enjoyed the five tips that I've given you today. If you follow all of them, you will have a far better chance of success in the MCS.